question to you, young man, is what will you establish? What are your plans to better this establishment? Or do you want to go and grow and be successful and run away from here? This place will made you what you are. There was a time in this religion when the shack was top dog, period. Period. It's only been very, 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 very recently we've took other than our Shiyuk as our role models. Very, very recently. This just happened. It was not always like this. Now, how many of you want to be close to Rasulullah or something? How many of you want to be close to Rasulullah? How many of you really, really, really yearn in your heart to be with Rasulullah? Really? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah rabbil alamin. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. We start with praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the many endowments he has endowed upon us that was not obligatory upon him, which is everything that he gave to us. Do not forget that in the struggle. Say Alhamdulillah, even in the struggle. And then we send complete Salah salam upon our Master Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his Al and his companions, his family and his friends, right? And his Muslim nation, all of us, we fear for us, which is sin, disobedience to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala in any way whatsoever, any way whatsoever. Small or big, right? And I pray that Allah Ta'ala protect us all from this. Amen. Before we begin, inshallah, the first thing that we want to do is all of you take one second to yourself, 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds or so, and make dua for your elders, for your mothers and your fathers and all of their friends and their mothers and their fathers and all of their friends. Those people who came to countries like this and they sacrificed their time and worked 13, 14, 15 hours a day to provide for you so you can have a space like this, you can pray comfortably. Comfortably. So please take one second, make dua specifically for your mother and your father and all of your elders. Please give them all a good ending. I mean. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Secondly, all of you young men, you young men, I have to tell you that you are the sweetest thing that I have ever seen. I have, I have never seen anything more sweeter than you. I have never seen anything more beautiful than you. I have never seen anything that glows brighter than you. You are the light. And for all of these elders here, you are the coolness of their eyes. The coolness. They look at you, and they look at the work to be done, the massive work to be done. And then they turn back and look at you, yeah Allah, it's worth it. And that work is for you, and 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 you. There is something that's taking place amongst you all at this present time. And what I fear is that many of the young people, you are not paying attention to what's going on. There is something here happening. Sometimes young people, we look at something and say, oh, that's not such a big deal. It's not shining, right? It doesn't have any glitter, any lights, nothing. What's the big deal about that? Because how was this place before you got it? How was this place before you got it? When you moved in, the musala wasn't like this. This minbar was not here. But the believers, they came and they brought the light. They made it shine. They are the reason why things are attracted to the place now because the believers who came and sacrificed and prayed in this space. Young people, please don't take what you have for granted. I beg you, whatever it is, that your fathers have worked for, you cherish it, and you honor it. And you take it, 
you use it, and you make it better. This is your job as a young man. Because I'm telling you something, I never, as a young man, thought about being up here today. And look where Allah has me. I see where Allah has me. I'm telling you. So one day when I say, who's the Imam? And they say, one of our elders here. One day they're going to say, one of you. Inshallah. Inshallah. Mm. And Inshallah, on that day we would say, MashaAllah, look what he's become. I come to talk to you about family today. I come to talk to you about family because all of our families have different dynamics. Right? All of our families have different dynamics. Depending on where we're placed in the world today. If you're here in the West, then there's some type of disconnection that you have with your people at home. I understand. This is true. Sometimes they call for money and sometimes you don't have it. It's a struggle here sometimes too, you know? And sometimes they don't understand. You're in, you're in the West. You're in the United Kingdom. You're in America. We need a couple bucks. I don't have it. Right? And it's hard sometimes. You young men, you're growing up in a world where you see all of these things that you want. Everyone wants so many things. Like you, what do you want? Tell me what you want. You don't know what you want? You know what you want. What do you want? Excuse me? A happy life. A happy life, mashallah. How many of you want a happy life? <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but you know something? Sometimes, that's a good answer. Sometimes, I ask another question. How many of you want a happy death? Sometimes you can't have happy life and happy death. Sometimes. Sometimes you may have to sacrifice happy life. Nice, nice life for happy death. Do you find your death that important to sacrifice a happy life for it? You do? Inshallah. I'm sure your father does. Inshallah. I'm sure your mother does as well. Inshallah. Allah bless all of the women of this deen, all of our mothers, all of our wives, and all of our daughters. I know we come together, places like this, I know we come together in places like this. It's just the brothers, right? Just the brothers, just us, alhamdulillah. But every single one of us came from a woman. Every single one of us came from a woman. <coughs> they have special merit. Every single one of us, the brothers, I know you wish that your father loved you most, but he loves your sister. <laughs> Every single one of us, we love our daughters. Man, subhanAllah. Like, our daughters, I have two, but I'm having one more soon. Make sure offer her, inshallah. Man, my sons, I tell them, be tough. You know, he falls, something like this is okay. Okay, go, come on, go, go, go. Right? My daughters, they go, uh, I say, oh. <laughs> how can I fix it? What do you need? What do you need? Oh, you right? Don't let her cry and scream. I said, oh, no, my heart. Excuse me. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> but our daughters. And for a man, there comes a time in his life where finding his wife becomes number one priority. It is. Some of you young guys don't know, you're still studying. You're feeling feelings, physically, some emotionally, but mostly physically. And I pray that Allah Ta'ala gives you the strength to suppress your urges until the right time comes. Because I know it's hard in this country. I get it. All those things that you young men are faced with. Everything they show you on TV, right? The way that the non-Muslim women are acting and the way that they are uh, so aggressive, right? And now today you see even some of the Muslim women uh, imitating that behavior. And it's hard for you. I know that. I know that. I'm a young man too. I've been younger. I've been young man too. I get it. I know that. But there's gonna come a time when it's gonna be the right time. You're gonna be done your studying, you're gonna have your Quran, you have your tafsir, you have went, you have studied, you have learned from the scholars this way, scholars that way, and you'll be home and you'll be a man, and you'll be ready. You'll be ready. And at that time, to find that one 
or two or three or four. <laughs> and that time to find that one is going to be the most important thing in your life. If you don't believe me, ask your father. If you don't believe me, ask your father. What I suggest to you is to marry the woman who has the dean. Because this one woman may be beautiful. Oh man, beautiful. Oh, my nuffs, right? Come on, you know what's up, right? My nuffs, right? I went this thing, the Prophet said to me, said for the woman, right? So I said that for the woman, that uh, to be pleasing to your husband's eye and to his nose. <laughs> Very important for a woman to be pleasing to her husband's eye and to his nose. Very important, right? But the thing is this, for all of you young men, I have to tell you that there comes a time when you are no longer excited about your wife. You will no longer be excited about it. What I have to remind you at this particular time is to do not marry for potential. When you marry, you marry her for who she is and accept that she may never grow from that point. So I beg you to aim high. <coughs> marry the woman who has the dean. Because when her physical beauty goes away, her heart will remain. When her physical beauty leaves her, she still will pray. When her hips widen and she gains weight, she's still going to be the one who wakes you up with Tahajda to prepare your children and teach them Quran before they come to Madrasa, your wife. I told you that I'm speaking today about family. Because we're talking about making a difference in our lives. That's supposed to be the topic, make a difference in our lives. If you want to make a difference in your life, start in your own house. No one has to tell your father to be the best father he can be. He just does it. No one has to tell your mother to be the best mother she can be. She just does it. We have to remind you a lot to be the best son that you can be. We have to remind you of that a lot. Be the best son that you can be and give the message to the woman to be the best daughter that you can be. Because our parents, and honestly, I actually wanted to talk about a few other things, but I find this to be the most important subject. Honestly, I do. And before I had children, I didn't think it was such a big deal. Just, that's just our parents, you know? Like, that's my dad, that's my mom, right? My dad comes around, you call him uncle, your dad comes around, I call him uncle, right? They're just our elders. It wasn't until I had children myself and I actually seen the hard work that goes into raising a child. Until I actually seen my wife letting my children suckle from her breasts in the middle of the night, dead tired, falling asleep while she's doing it. I say, SubhanAllah. No. SubhanAllah. It makes me think about my mom, you know? You know, it really makes me think about my mom and how sometimes she will go without, literally at dinner time, not eat so we can eat our food. I think to myself, what kind of person will make such a sacrifice for you? And at that time, I was very, very arrogant youth. But I pray that Allah forgive me for my sins. I said, mommy, it's not enough. Mommy, not enough. It's not enough. Me and my brother, we split the sandwich. She gives him one, gives me one. He eats the sandwich really quick. I bite mine. He's already done. I give it to him. He's my little brother. We've been through this part already, so he doesn't. And it was in those times that she taught us about Allah and how to rely on Allah, trusting Allah. And how that all of the risk and all of the sustenance comes from him. And how honestly, if you're a good person, you don't have to worry about your risk. Allah is going to provide for you like the birds. You worry about being a good person. Why am I mentioning this if we're supposed to talk about family and making a difference? Why am I mentioning this? I'm mentioning this because the majority of our parents who came to the West, especially from this continent of Asia, they came for work, financial freedom to escape financial oppression, you know? They didn't have the luxuries that you have to sit in the masjid and learn Quran all day long. 
They couldn't go to the shops and buy whatever they wanted, like many of you do. How many thobes you have? How many? Four? Okay. How about you? Five. Five? Okay. Five. That's nine. How about you? Four. Four. So that's nine. That's thirteen. How about you? So, so many. You don't know? Okay, how about you? Yeah. Four. Four? Okay, that's seventeen. That's four people. How about him right there in front of you? How about you? Four? Okay. So five people, 20 thobes. <laughs> there was a time, if you asked five men in this community how many thobes they had, all five of them, they would only have one. It'd be five total thobes. <laughs> you remember the days, uncle? You remember the days when there was work, work, and then Juma. How many do they laugh at Juma? You almost told Juma. We can get dressed. You know, hear good daughters, Qatib, you know, some good food when we get back home with our families, rejoice the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, some good utter, some good smells, you know, on this beautiful Yom Tujum. But do you remember when the other six days were completely rough days? Just every day, work, 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 work. And then this beautiful day of Yom Tujum, where we will come and we will hear the Imam. In any place that he would do it from. Because many of your uncles that come here, is that a child, is that a child talking? It's okay. MashaAllah. Many of the elders who've come here, Yamutu Jum at that time wasn't like this. <laughs> Nothing like this. But they established. They established. So much so that now all of you have four and five and six thobes. They established. My question to you, young man, is what will you establish? What are your plans to better this establishment? Or do you want to go and grow and be successful and run away from here? This place will made you what you are. Because a young man's mind, it goes a lot of different places. And a lot of time, a young man's mind, it runs the opposite direction of responsibility. It happens, bro. Especially when you're young. You say to yourself, man, I don't want to struggle like that. Why should I if I don't have to? I can just go here. I can just go there. I can just do that. But how many of you have heard about this uh, sheep who disconnects from the pack. You know the lone sheep. You know this sheep, the one who did. We were all together like this, and this one did this. You know him, right? You know what happens to him, right? That's it. That's it. That's it. So all of you young men who are trying to be individuals, right? Because you have, how many of you have Facebook? Right? Alhamdulillah. Our age group at least, right? I'm 27, how old are you? Okay, so our age group is Facebook. These young guys, they don't do Facebook. No. Snapchat. <laughs> no Snapchat? Don't be shy to raise your hands. This is, uh, yeah, man, mashallah. This is no judgment zone. Because honestly, I gotta tell you, your fathers, they've brung you here to speak to me because I'm young and I love the deen. That's why they brought you here to speak to me. But I also, before I leave, I want your fathers to hear from you. <laughs> because there is a generational gap and it just happens. No one's at fault for it. No one's at fault for it. But there is a generational gap that happens and we are separated between our elders and our youth. And if anyone wants this deen to prevail, the elders and the youth have to come back together. There was a time when the young men, they enjoyed the uncle's company. There was a time they would love to be with the uncles to hear what they had to say. What do you have for me, uncle? What wisdom, what advice do you have for me, uncle? Today, all of the young men, I'm telling you, literally, they look up to pop stars and basketball players and football players, uh, soccer and American football. 
because there's difference. <laughs> <laughs> I say football, a kid says football. I say, yeah, where's it at? I'm looking at my hands, he kicks it to me. Say, oh no, different football for me. That's who they look up to. But you know, they speak about the end of times in this religion a lot, you know? How many people have heard something about the end of times? Right? We've heard this. Many narrations. Many, many narrations. Many narrations. Many hadith with uh, good uh, sinat, with good isnat, right? Sahih, really. Many, many, many narrations about the ending of times and these different things that will take place. And so we don't have to get into them because I'm sure that many of you are seeing them. I'm sure that your teachers are reflecting upon them and your scholars are reminding you about what the Prophet Wasallam said that these times would be like. I'm sure. But one thing that one should know is that a sign of the end of times is that things will be known by inversions. Inversions. Right? That's what, this, that's what it means when it says that like uh, the slave will give birth to the mistress. Right? And barefooted, destitute men, right? From those deserts will now build these really big buildings. Right? You know what's up. Right? That's how it goes. These particular things are known as inversions. The opposite of how they should be. What inversion of the time that we have is our role models. <clears throat> There was a time in this religion when the Sheikh was top dog, period. Period. It's only been very, 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 very recently when we've took other than our Shiyuk as our role models. Very, very recently. This just happened. It was not always like this. This is so new that I'm telling you, even in your father's time, the Sheikh that was who you looked up to. That's who you want to be like. The one who is knowledgeable about the religion. But today, it's different. The role models are celebrities. The role model is uh, the guy who plays for Manchester team, kicking guy, right? You know, he's the role model. He's no role model. He's no role model. He's no role model. You know who your role model should be? Your role model should be someone who has such a role model and that person has such a role model and that person has such a role model all the way back to the role model being the Prophet <laughs> Don't you see? There's no disconnection from him at that time to us today. And this connection is through men and women. There are many women scholars in this religion. There are like hidden gems and hidden Jews. But alhamdulillah, even at some time, I had one woman teacher. Literally, it, uh, it was so weird because, you know, like learning from a woman sometimes, like, <laughs> but that, yeah, that, yeah, that, 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 they're out there. They're just, the women scholars are like, you won't find them unless someone brings you to them like that, or they, or they call for you, but they, they won't reveal themselves, you know? Um, and may Allah bless them for all of that work because they're not like men, they don't get any recognition for it. They're women, so they don't do the camera thing. They're not gonna go and give big speech someplace. They're not gonna do that. So may Allah, they are most sincere. May Allah reward them, Amen. So, all of you, I'm not here to judge you. I'm not here to offend you. I'm not here to tell you that the way that you have things is completely backwards. I'm not here to tell you that, because it's not true. Even amongst some bad things in our communities, MashaAllah, look at our, everyone look around. No, literally, don't look at me, look around. No, that's now, look around, everyone, look around. Look at your community. Look at your community. SubhanAllah. You have literally between 80 or 70 and 100 men in this room right now. And they all say, La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Don't you see how strong you are? SubhanAllah. Don't you see how strong you are? How many men, everyone, take one step? Really, how many men do you see in the crowd that have gray in their beard? 
You know there was some, there was some that was sent, that was said that this gray hair is going to be light on the day of judgment. This gray hair in his beard, those little gray specks in yours, this is light on the day. How many men have this light in their beards? You young people have to realize what you have. When you see this gray, rush to it. Submit to this gray. This gray that you see, it represents a life lived. It represents a life lived. It represents experiences. It represents things that they've been through that you have not been through yet that you will go through. It represents their status. It represents them as being our elders. And I know this is said a lot, like the uncles, the uncles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uncles are literally the best thing that we got. But quickly, look at all of these strong young men with big black beards. MashaAllah. Look at their faces. He's shiny, mashallah. He has wisdom in black, mashallah. <laughs> wisdom in strength, right? Look at this young man. He's beautiful, mashallah. Look at this young man. He's beautiful, mashallah. And guess what? Their backs are strong. He can fast all day, no problem. <laughs> no problem, this man. <laughs> all day, he can stand up and pray all night long. No problem. Nope, his knees won't even get tired. Feet won't even get tired. Our uncles, they can't stand so long anymore. They have to sit down sometimes now, you know? Some of them, their ankles are so weak, they cannot stand KM too long. Even in the middle of the night when they really, really want to, they have to sit and you can stand. SubhanAllah, it's SubhanAllah. Look at this, this mixture of what we have. We have wisdom, we have strength, but Look at these baby boys. Man. You laughing? You smiling? Show us your smile. Let me see it. <laughs> MashaAllah. All of you young men, let me see the smile, man. Let your elders see it. Let your father, let your uncles, let your big brother see you smile. All they want you to do is smile. They want to make things good for you. Look at these boys. We have wisdom. We have strength. Look at the light. Look at the light. Noor. Because you know a child, if he's not Mokalif, you know Mokalif, like uh, morally responsible. So it's three things to have heard the call of Islam, basic names that you understand. It's to be pubescent, and for men and women, little difference, but either 15 lunar years old to have ejaculated, right? To have discharged sexual fluid, right? Either way, or bisexual intercourse, right? Because the two don't necessarily mean the one is other gonna happen, right? So you have this, but when you know, when you get to that point, is that at that particular point, you become a man. Because at that particular point, if you do a bad thing, you deserve to be punished. So I have to remind you all that these children, even if they did bad, they can't acquire any sin at this point in their lives. Think about that in practical terms. Think about it practically. They can't do anything wrong on the side of Allah at this time. The child dies before this age of Mukallaf, Jannah. Insane man dies, Jannah. So spiritually, these children have authority over us. They literally, they don't acquire sin. <laughs> and the reward and the merit for how you take care of them. It's unprecedented, your sons. And they don't have strength yet, and they don't have wisdom yet, so they don't even understand the light that they possess. They don't even get it. They just baby boys. They wanna play soccer and run around, do a flip. <laughs> well, the, you know, the video game is like a big thing now. You know, Uncle. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right? Or the computer. Computer. My day, computer wasn't that big. You had to be like, you had to have money to have computer. 
So we didn't get computers till we got older, you know? Yeah, yeah. But video games, man. Nintendo? <laughs> <laughs> read a book. Read a book, Nintendo. <laughs> Thank God for my mother. She made me put Nintendo down, made me read a book. And then made me write and explain what I read in this book. And then made me correct it and go back and rewrite it. The kind of education I received. Literally in poor America. So you see about making a difference? You see about your family? There's nothing for you to really do outside in the world. Truly. Some of you are going to have the position where you have to go give dawah. And if Allah Ta'ala calls upon you to give dawah, give it. And be unapologetic about it and tell the truth. Allah Sunni Wala Jama'a, Sunni Islam. Do not let them pervert our religion. Period. Under any circumstance whatsoever. If Allah Ta'ala calls for you to go give the dawah of this religion, you give it. And you give your life to it. Period. Period. But here's the thing, everyone is not going to go give dawah of the religion. That's not everybody's job. That's reserved for a few selected men and a few selected women of the Ummah in every time. That's reserved a few selected men, a few selected women in the Ummah in every time. But you know this thing for Ain, and you know this thing for Kifaya, right? We have this, we have personal obligation, it's like my praying, my fasting, just between me and Allah. You know, just between me and Allah, right? These things I have to do to consider myself as a Muslim. Whether I'm sheikh or layman, common person, it doesn't matter, right? You have to pray five times, you have to fast, you have to, right? This is Fard'ayn, right? How many of you know Fard Kifaya? Communal obligation. Communal obligation is this thing that if one of us fulfill it, then everyone is safe with Allah. But if no one fulfills it, then everyone is sinful. Should I give you an example? Are there any orphans in your community? Are there any young men or young women who lost their fathers, who lost their mothers? If there are, then the community, someone has to make them feel not motherless or not fatherless. This is the deen of the religion. SubhanAllah. The orphan has a right on whatever locality it is in to be treated, not motherless or not fatherless. If one person does this, alhamdulillah, the whole um is okay. Your community is okay. Your jama'ah is okay. If no one takes care of this orphan, then everybody's sin. SubhanAllah. Don't you know the Prophet Sallallahu He said that whoever takes care of the orphan, that him and I will be like this in Jannah? How many of you want to be close to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How many of you want to be close to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? How many of you really, really, really yearn in your heart to be with Rasulullah? Really? His family. Do you think about that? Another example of this Father Ayn, I'll give you something more practical. More practical. Man, he should have a man doctor. Who understands that, right? You know that. Even if he's not a Muslim, even if he's not a Muslim, it's better to have non-Muslim man doctor than it is to have Muslim woman doctor. Likewise for the women. It's better for them to have a Muslim doctor, woman. If you can't find Muslim woman, then not a Muslim woman. And if she can't be the doctor, then a Muslim man. And I would be like the worst, a non-Muslim man. If no one does this in your community, then the whole community is sinful. So in each given time, you need a man doctor and you need a woman doctor in your community. So you young men who want to be doctors, make your intention to fulfill the communal obligation so that way, my community is taken care of. We have a doctor so long as I'm alive. SubhanAllah. So that way, it's fine. Do you need it? Alhamdulillah. 
Same for the women. So see, it's not a bad thing to spend all your time university. It's not a bad thing. And I get it, if you spend all your time at university, then you didn't spend that much time in the dean. I get it. But our teachers, they taught us, this person who has Tafsir al-Quran, he spent all this time. And you know anyone who knows about Quran, to do Tafsir takes long time. To memorize, you do a couple years. No problem, especially if you're little. The little, all the little boys should be with all. Make sure they memorize Quran, all of them, inshallah. Because they can do it. They can do it. If, if you take the weight of the play a little bit, don't take all the play, because then you make everything dark for them. So, but take not too much play. Take some, some of the play has to come back, right? It has to come back, some of the play. But they can do it. They have the minds. They're sharp. They're sharp. No problem. They may not understand, but man, they can memorize it quickly. A couple years. If you're seven, you can be done two, three, four, five years, and it, gets, it takes you longer the older you get. So the person who starts 13, maybe it takes them longer to learn it than the one who starts at seven. And the one who starts at 20, maybe it takes them longer than the one who starts at 13. That's how Quran is. The sooner the better. Remember that with Quran, the sooner the better. And then after all of that, then they go study tafsir. Five years, 10 years, 15 years. My teachers anyway. They take a long, 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 long time. And not like everything else, just tafsir. Years. Don't you know this one who's a doctor? <coughs> For the um, he gets the same reward as this one who spends his time with Tassir al-Quran. Communal obligation. Why? Because you have to have a hufad in your community. If there is no hafad in the community, then everyone is sinful. If there's one, then we're okay. So about making a difference. The difference is to be made at home. The difference is to be made amongst your family, amongst your friends, and amongst your community. The difference is to be made by when we succeed, because sometimes each generation in dunya, in dunya, sometimes each generation does better. Right? This one, his father works on his hands. Cleaning, scrubbing, building, building, bang, bang, bang. And then this one's a doctor, nice car. He wears like the, you know, the nice Western clothes, right? The, uh, alhamdulillah, the outfit, right? And then his children, mashallah, I don't know how many of you are third generation here, by the time we get to the third generation, the kids have everything. The kids have everything. Third, by the third, at least, if not third generation, fourth generation, kids got it all. They got it all. And each generation, in dunya, we get farther away from the identity of our grandfathers. Is that success? Truthfully, is that success? Oh, this is not success. This is the beginning of a failure. I have to tell you and I have to be honest. If you want to make a difference, then establish. And if you're already established, then honor what was established for you and make it better and to never disconnect from your brethren <clears throat> under any circumstances whatsoever. Because I need you, and he does too. He needs all of us, and all of us need all of them, and all of them need all of us. And when every man leaves here, he's going to go back and return to a woman, <clears throat> whether it's his wife, or his mom, or his daughter. Some of the young lads, that's how they say it, young lads, I like that. Some of you young men, maybe you have a flat or something, so you're going home to nobody. <laughs> right? But still, you belong to your mother. All of those women are counting on all of us. Those perfect diamonds, rubies, and jewels that are covered in those hijabs. 
those diamonds, those Jews covered in those abayas, covered in those niqabs with their gloves on. SubhanAllah. Diamonds. And all of them are counting on all of us to be the brothers of this religion. And if we stand together, united on a the front, they will be protected forever. And guess what? If not, that's only because someone took my life. That's it. The only thing that should come between us and our woman is death. Don't you know? But here's the thing. All of us, right? You don't have to always get on the front line with the sword. Right? No one's doing this anymore. You remember like some like, you read about like the old scenes where like the enemies of Islam, they would line up, right? They would, and they would send out their best fighter, right? And then the Prophet was something he would send out either Hamza or Ali, right? Like, like this, right? <laughs> Sometimes I imagine in my mind, this is my favorite, man. The war stories are my favorite. I gotta be honest, man. Like the strategicness, this this like the strategy. You know, it was amazing, especially the battle with the trench, you know, mm -hmm. amazing. It blows, it blows my mind sometimes. I said, man, they're some smart guys, man. <laughs> you know, really. And we, we don't even, we have all this stuff available to us and we're not even thinking. They had nothing, man. And only a few of them. And only a very, 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 very few of them. And they conquered. And they conquered. How many of you, I'll say it this way, they conquered so much so that all of us became Muslims. SubhanAllah. Because don't you know when your countries, Pakistan, Bangladesh, uh, Iraq, Iran, India, right? You know that there was a time when La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah was not there. You know this, right? Small amount of men brought it to you. Small amount of men, and they brought it to you. And look at your countries now. SubhanAllah. Look at your countries now. I know the physical climate is rough. I get it. I know it's hard, on the physical, on the body, to live there. It's hot. I know. Not a lot of um, uh, sanitation, the garbage, right? Maybe you don't have trash truck like here, maybe you burn it. So the living condition is very rough. But man, the spirituality of the Dean is alive in those places. Don't you see it when you go back home? Don't you feel it? The imam that never ever left, he never went anywhere, he stayed right there. You go back and see him, don't you feel it? The question is, what will you all do for the future? What will the future generations of Muslims say that this generation of Muslims have done for us? What will they say? Will they say that we all became doctors and lawyers and forgot about the religion? Or they say we became doctors and lawyers and we strengthened their religion. What would they say? So lastly, and I'll close, I think I'm going above the time. Very sorry. But please, if you want to make a difference, start at home. Start in your community. <coughs> start firstly with your mother and your father and your brothers and your sisters. And then your cousins and then your friends. And if you have an elder brother, you give him all the respect. After your father, make sure that you respect your elder brother like he's your father. I don't care if he's only one day older than you. Give your older brother the respect. If you don't give your older brother the respect, you will break your family down. You will make things very difficult for your father. Give your older brother the respect that he deserves. Even if you're stronger than him, even if you're smarter than him, give him the respect that he deserves as your older brother. Because really, your father may not say anything, but this competition between you, it hurts him very, 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 very bad. Very, 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 very bad. And he doesn't say anything a lot of the times because he doesn't want to get in the middle because he doesn't want anyone to feel like I'm picking someone's side. 
He doesn't want one son to say, my father loves his other son more than me. He doesn't want you to say that, so he just stays away. But it's hurting him very, very bad. So I'm telling you, if you are the little brother, you respect your older brother like he is your father. And inshallah, Allah will give us success. Yeah, Allah, please, Allah, please bless all of our parents and all of our teachers and everyone who sacrificed and gave their life for this deen. Amen.